Hi, my name is Alex Spencer, and this is a tutorial for Tuts Plus. One of the best ways to avoid confusion when speaking with your audience is making sure that they see the exact same things you do. Better still, making sure they see and hear exactly what you want them to can make even better communication possible. To help you achieve this magical communication nirvana, I will be demonstrating two different ways to grab screenshots and two different ways to record your screen and audio on the Mac. Let's get started. Regardless of the application you're working with or where you are in the Mac operating system, you can capture screenshots on the fly using one of these two simple shortcut combinations. If I'd like to be able to highlight a specific part of my screen and capture it, I can hold down Command, Shift, and Tap 4. My cursor has now become a bullseye that I can simply use to click and drag across the area that I would like to screenshot. When I let go, the screenshot has been conveniently placed on my desktop and time stamped for me. Alternatively, if I'd like to capture my entire screen, I can simply hold down Command, Shift, and tap the number 3. This actually took two screenshots on my computer because I have dual monitors set up. But let's take a look at these two screenshots that I'd like to show you. I'm going to hold down Command to highlight both of these and double click on them to launch them in preview. As you can see, the first screenshot was just the area I selected, whereas the second screenshot was my entire screen. Once I have these screenshots loaded up in preview, I can annotate them, resize them, or export them to a JPEG or other file type as much as I'd like. But that's another training for another day. So for right now, I'm going to Command Q to quit preview, and I'm going to Command Spacebar and launch a program called Grab. Grab is a utility application that ships with OS X. If your screenshots require a little bit more precision, or you'd like a preview of what you screenshot, this may be a better fit. I'm going to launch Grab and move up to the Capture window. You'll see we have Selection, Window, Screen, and Time Screen. Let's take a look at Selection. Well, once again, it's pretty much just a drag and let go, and then I'm shown a preview of what I actually shot. If I wanted to save this screenshot, I would go File, Save, give the screenshot a name, and save it to whatever file path I'd like. I don't really want to keep this screenshot though, so I'm going to close it. Now let's look at how we can capture a specific window in our operating system using Grab. Well, I'm going to bring up my Chrome window here, then I'm going to flip back to Grab, choose Capture, Window, choose Window, and take a picture of that you'll notice that it gives me a perfect picture of the Chrome window I'm working in. So as you just saw, unlike the simple shortcuts that are baked into the Mac OS X, Grab application will allow me to have a bit more precision and give me the opportunity to preview the screenshot before I actually save it to my hard drive. Now that you understand screen capturing, let's move on to screen recording. Occasionally, a single screenshot is just not enough to get your point across. Fortunately, you can record your movements around your desktop as well as the audio to go along with it using a baked-in application you have probably already seen and used before, QuickTime. So I'm going to launch QuickTime, and once it's launched, I'm going to go to File, New Screen Recording. When I tap the Record button, I see an option to either click the screen once or drag a part of the screen I'd like to record. By clicking the screen once, the recording starts. To stop the recording, I simply click this stop button in my menu bar, and I'm presented with my finished recording. Let's go through that again, but this time I want to only record a section of the screen. So I'm going to close this without saving. I'm going to come to QuickTime, File, New Screen Recording, hit the record, and let's just record this section of my screen. I'll start recording, and I'll just kind of move my mouse around in here a little bit when I'm done. I'll click the stop button on my menu bar, and QuickTime will present me a video of my mouse moving around that section. As a note, when you're setting up these recordings in QuickTime, you can also set it up to record your audio along with your movements. By going to File, New Screen Recording, and clicking this downward triangle, I can choose to record from any of the audio devices that are connected to my computer. In fact, the only real downfall to screen recording with QuickTime is the fact that you can't edit anything after you're done recording it. That takes us to ScreenFlow. If you're interested in giving your screen recordings a bit more polish, I can't recommend ScreenFlow enough. You can download it from the Apple App Store. 
With ScreenFlow, you can edit the video or audio you record either together or separately, and this can make for some powerful screencasts. In fact, it's the software I'm using to make this screencast right now. So because we're already recording, I can't show you how to start or stop this recording without creating a whole lot of confusion. But what I will tell you is once you start and stop the recording using the instructions in the written tutorial, you will be presented with a screen that looks something like this. To edit out some of the audio, video, or both on the respective timelines, all you do is move the marker to where you'd like to begin the cut, choose the timeline, either the audio, the video, or both, and hold down Command, Shift, T to create a cut. Notice everything behind the cut has already been highlighted, and if I'd like to remove that cut, I simply hit delete. Then I can highlight all of these timelines and bring them in to create a seamless edit. I can even add additional video properties, audio properties, callouts, media transitions, or text to the video using the toolbar located to my right. As I mentioned before, ScreenFlow is a powerful screencasting application that deserves its own tutorial, so we'll reserve that for another day. Once I'm satisfied with all of the timeline edits and property adjustments, I save the video by going to File, Export, choosing the size of the video, clicking Export, choosing the file path and name for the video, and then simply click Save. Whether it's a simple screenshot or a full-blown webcast, adding that extra bit of information can go a long way towards clear communication with your audience. Using the techniques that I've just shown you, you can now either screencast or screenshot like a champ. Thanks for watching.